Hi everyone, I'm Alexandra Martinez. I am a developer advocate here at MuleSoft, and in today's video, we are going to learn how to use the DataWeave libraries in AnyPoint Exchange. The written tutorial version of this video was created by MuleSoft mentor Sonali Shah. Thank you so much for your contribution to this tutorial. Now, let's get started. In the previous tutorial, we already generated this DataWeave library using best practices like creating the documentation created unit tests, and checking our configuration is working using the mappings. Now for this tutorial, we are going to take this state with library, put it in Exchange, and then use it from Exchange in a Mule application. The first thing we're going to do is to extract our organization ID. So if you go into Access Management, and then select Business Groups, your organization, Settings, here you will have the Business Group ID, and this is your organization ID that you are going to use for the rest of the tutorial. So copy that and put it somewhere safe. Now, if you go into Visual Studio Code and you open your DataWave library, let's open the pom.xml file. And here, instead of putting the org.mycompany that we had previously done, let's paste here our new organization ID. Now let's scroll down until you see the distribution management right here. And let's uncomment this part as well as the other part right here, the repository that says exchange repository, like this. Now, the third step is to update the organization ID from both of these URLs. So just put here your actual organization ID in both parts. And that's it for this part. So just save your PAM XML. And now we're going to head into the settings.xml file. Depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac, this will have a different URL. Here that I'm in Mac, I have it under users, alexandramartinez.m2, and then settings.xml. So in this XML file, you are going to add this part if you don't already have it, and you will update your username and password with the ones that you use to access any point platform. Another important part to notice is that this ID must be the same ones that we have in the pom.xml. In this case, we have exchange. And if we go back to the pom.xml, here we have the ID exchange and here we have the ID exchange as well. So this is all good. I'm going to save my settings.xml with my new credentials and we are going to try this. I am going to open a new terminal right here. If I go into terminal and then select new terminal, this will open a new window here where I can conveniently run any commands from my terminal in Visual Studio Code. So I am going to run this command right here, Maven deploy, and this will deploy my DataWeave library into any point exchange. Once you see that the build was a success, then you know that this worked. Note that this command also runs all of the unit tests. So this is good because if any of the unit test is not working properly, you will not see a build success right here. This just ensures even more quality for your code. So now that this worked properly, we can go back to exchange and we will see our new library being deployed right here. You can also filter if you select here on the drop down and select data with libraries, you can filter to see only the data with libraries and nothing else. So now if you click on it, you will be able to see all of the documentation that we previously did for the function. For example, if I go here inside the module, I will be able to see the description for my function and I will be able to see the example that I created in my documentation. Pretty cool, right? Now let's retrieve this DataWave library in order to use it from a Mule application. If you click here on dependency snippets, you will see this new window where you can select Maven, Gradle, or SVT. Let's select the one from Maven, and then we can click on copy right here. Now let's go into Studio and let's create a new Mule project from scratch. I'm gonna name this DWLibs and select finish. Now let's open the pom.xml file that we can find here in the project. If you see this view, you can just click on source right here to see the source code and then go into the dependencies part and add a new dependency with the code that we copied from Exchange, like this. Once we save this, the library will be extracted from Exchange and it will be added into our jars. So let's save this. And now if we see here project libraries, we will see that we have our new date format conversion module right here. 
And now if we go back to our Visual Studio code, you remember that we had already a map in here where we tested that this code was working correctly. So we can actually take just this mapping and we can put it in a new transform message component. So if I take a transform message from here and I drag and drop it into the canvas, I can now add this code into this script right here. So let me paste it right here. And here we can see that we are importing the daytime conversion function from the date format conversion module. And then we are just using this function to make sure that this is working properly. We can confirm that this code is working by clicking on the preview button right here. So if we click on the preview, we will be able to see that this is working properly. And we can edit this to make sure that this works. Cool. So that is all for this tutorial. Congratulations. You learned how to deploy your DataWave library into Exchange and then how to use the DataWave library from Exchange into a Mule application. I hope you really liked this video and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.